What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 best WWE backlash matches of all time. WWE WrestleMania backlash, which I still don't think they have to do the whole WrestleMania backlash. I think it should just be backlash and call it what it is. Um, but that's happening this Sunday. Best believe you know we will be live streaming it on the Inner Clutch page, so stay tuned to that. Um, and it should be a good time. Uh, hopefully it is. And I, I know a lot of people consider Backlash as a B-tier pay-per-view, and understandably so. But I will say, there have been some pretty good, like, Backlash um, uh, pay-per-views, man. I think with WWE, for whatever reason, it's like the B-level pay-per-views or the pay-per-views we don't expect to be that good or that entertaining usually end up exceeding a lot of our expectations sometimes or most of the time you know it, they just exceed our expectations i guess we're not expecting it to be anything and then it ends up being more entertaining and then the big ones that we expect like summer slam survivor series you know the the big the royal rumble those pay-per-views we expect those to be top notch in some of the best matches ever and it may be one or two things that are good on the entire show so we're gonna check out some of the best matches of all time appreciate all the love and support Road to, you know, ADK. Tis the CWE trademark, WrestleMania trademark, Backlash trademark, colon, WWE WrestleMania Backlash yep. trademark. WWE having a perfectly normal branding one as they always do. Yep. Yes, Vince, you do improve the SEO of all your shows by throwing the word WrestleMania in there. Stupendous. Who cares if it makes all your content look like it was designed by the tiny robot who lives inside the WWE network. Anyway, my gripes <laughs> about how WWE isn't a product designed by people for people. Backlash yeah. is a real Marmite show, one that tends to either fix the problems of that year's WrestleMania or double down on them. It's also one of the longest running B pay per view format in company mm -hmm. history. So there's a lot of very good and very bad to pick from. With this year's show just around the corner, let's have a look at the good ones. Treat ourselves. Quick point of order the greatest wrestling match ever is not on this list. Cannot be doing with the piped in crowd noise pandemic matches. No, crowds, <laughs> no thanks. I'm Adam Hailing from. Even though that match was uh, entertaining, it, it was crazy how they were taking other people's finishers and using it. I think what they did, they hyped it up too much. Even though that was a good match, very good match, I think they they overhyped it as the greatest wrestling match ever. I think that's too much. Just let the let the fans decide that. Get, like I, when you do that, you're you you're expected to put on something great, and it was. It was, even though they were using everybody's finishers. It still was still was hella good, though. From Parts of Unknown, and here are 10 best WWE Backlash matches of all time. And if you don't want to receive a backlash from us, you better subscribe. Because if you don't, Ollie will know. And it will make him sad. Honorable mention, Scotty Too Hotty versus Dean Malenko 2000. Hot take, this match is a little overhyped. Yes, yes, I'll be sure to read your imminent comment and log it with the rest of my failings. Don't get me wrong, this match is a lovely surprise. A 15-minute technically sound cruiserweight match on pay-per-view, which is bonkers for the WWE, especially in the Attitude Era. Yeah. And a Dean Malenko right, match at that. A man thoroughly wasted by the Fed. But it's mostly subdued until the admittedly very wonderful closing sequence. Top rope DDT, goodness me. Oh, Wanted man. to mention it to try and stem the internet hate, but it doesn't quite crack the top 10, you bloody hipsters. Number 10, Edge versus John Cena, 2009. Mm. WWE would very much like you to think that John Cena's greatest rival is Randy Orton. I think they're destined to do this forever, says WWE nudging you in the ribs. Do you get the reference? They'll say it's from that movie, Face Off. But Cena's actual best rival is Edge, the two. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can somewhat agree with someone saying that. Edge gave him, he was one of his best rivals. Definitely Edge is up there for sure. He he was he was a menace to John. Really Cena. brought out the best in each other. Bit their SummerSlam match, their amazing TLC match at Unforgiven, or this a Last Man Standing match featuring John Cena, where checks notes he actually f***ing loses. Mm. How do you do? Honestly, it's a modern era Last Man Standing match, which means the match stops every few minutes for some tedious referee dinner theater. But the spots in between are joyous. Cena yeeting the steel steps at Edge, Edge getting AA'd into the crowd, and a closing spot. I've seen her getting yeeted into a spotlight yep. like he was a bunch of steel steps. Last man standing matches, as we'll soon see, live and die on their spots. And this one had some good ones. Number nine, Shane McMahon versus The Big Show, Definitely 2001. A better last a man one. standing that match. Spot yeah, you heard. Shane, Vin, uh, Big Show. Oh, my God, bro. They 
spot central, but hella enjoyable. Mate, a last man standing match between pre-constantly crying Big Show and pre-thumb Shane McMahon was better than Cena and Edge, and I don't want to hear any of your nonsense. Yeah. It's the kind of pure story plunder heavy match that was Shane's speciality in the 2000s, but the crowd are apeshit for the whole thing. Even Vince's angry little run into fell the giant, Shane pulls a bunch of magic tricks out mm -hmm. of his ass, including a really funny chloroform bit, an all-time great big boot from Test, Bang and closing with one of the oh, all-time great craziest, stunts in wrestling oh my God, history. A sensational spot, dive oh my God. from a man who majored in sensational dives from a divey league university. Is it a good technical match? No. no. Is it highly sports entertaining? Yes. yes. Number <laughs> eight, Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit, 2001. From the same card, is it highly sports entertaining? Not as much. Is it a good technical match? Oh, you betcha. You really don't hear this match get talked up enough, although to be honest, there's a probably very good reason yeah. for that. But it's one of the better Iron Man matches in WWE history, a match format that the big dub usually excels at as well, so that's high praise. Off the back of their hastily thrown together match at Mania X7, Backlash saw Angle and Benoit continue their stellar rivalry with yet another contest, this time to find out who can make their opponent tap the most in 30 minutes. Honestly, these guys had something like half a dozen pay-per-view singles matches altogether, and there's not a dud between them. This is a more methodically paced affair, but it builds and builds really Hey, despite what Chris Benoit went uh, through, uh, um, during his final moments, you know, his final days, we can all agree, despite his heinous actions that he 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 did, he still was one of the best technical wrestlers of that time period. He was, and I, I'm not praising what he did. I will never praise what he did because you know, people died, you know, and it, it sucks, you know, what he was going through mentally. It's it's that whole situation is so tragic, but there's one thing I can say that in the ring, just in the square circle, he was one of the best to ever do it. That's one thing I will say about that. I'm gonna leave it at that. I can respect what he did in, in the ring, craft wise, but I I definitely cannot uh I can't I can't rock with what happened outside the ring. It, it, that was just that whole situation, very very awful really satisfyingly to a thunderous crescendo as Benoit comes from 3-1 down to win in overtime. Smart, brutal, and a technically amazing achievement. This is a shining example of why WWE had the best mid-card around in the early 2000s. Number seven, John Cena versus Edge versus Triple H, 2006. A weird match, main eventing a weird show in WWE's weirdest year. Case in point, this is the show where Vince and Shane fight Shawn Michaels and mm -hmm. God. God who came down to the ring to yeah. the Funkasaurus theme tune. Never change Vince, oh, unless man. you can, in which case, <laughs> change. The main event saw <laughs> WWE try to fix the WrestleMania 22 match, match between John uh, Cena and Triple H where the Chicago crowd booed Cena and cheered trips. I know, said WWE, we'll put even more dastardly heel Edge into the mix, then people will cheer Cena. The rest no. of the development narrator, they did not. However, the match is also really bloody good with Triple H putting the emphasis on bloody, bloody Jesus yeah. big lad. The crowd reaction dynamics are all over the shop, but that actually makes for a really fun and rowdy watch. And it's always impressive when Big Match John picks up two boys, a blockbuster main event to a very strange show. Now, this is why I say, man, Backlash it, it is considered a B-tier pay-per-view, but it is quite, it can be good. This is why when people were saying, oh, they sh I'm glad that they canceled the unification match because it's a B-tier pay-per-view. You can still put on something very great and on any pay-per-view and make it that you can make that pay-per-view one of the best ones of the year. You don't have to relegate yourself to, oh, we're just going to put on BS on this pay-per-view because everyone considers it a low-tier pay-per-view. No, you want to make sure each and every pay-per-view has something that means like a match or a feud or a series of matches that make it seem important. It doesn't always have to be SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, uh, the Saudi shows. No, make sure your other pay-per-views seem important. That's how you make people overall want to stay around for the product. Oh, I can't wait to see their next pay-per-view. If they did this on Backlash, I can't wait to see what they do next. That's just my opinion. Number six, Seth Rollins versus The Miz, 2018. 2018 was the year of Seth Rollins. From that crazy gauntlet match performance early in the year to mm -hmm. stealing the show at Mania 34 to one of the best intercontinental title runs in recent memory. For most of the year, Seth was all banger all the time. Yeah, and he this was. is no exception. He was a on a quintessential roll. example of what pay-per-view openers and mid-card title matches should be. Something with a well-told, sensical story that slowly heats up the crowd to a fever pitch. This has all of that in spades. It starts off slow, builds some trademark Seth Rollins showpiece 
offense. Plenty of good dastardly twattery from Miz. Before the match throws in a joyful little twist, Rollins injures his knee and Seth sells it beautifully with the knee buckling during multiple moves, leading to heart-stopping false finishes. The kind of icy matches that we don't see enough of right now. Number five, Chris Benoit Definitely. versus Triple H versus Shawn Michaels. That was a good one. Oh, that was a, a good really one. good sequel that people don't talk enough about, and that yeah. probably has something to do with the reason why people yeah. don't talk about the Ultimate Submission match quite as much. A rematch of the amazing main event triple threat mm -hmm. from Mania 20. Benoit trips, Michaels 2 wasn't quite as good as the original, but it's still fast aces and buoyed immensely by the fact that, oh boy, do Montreal still hate Shawn Michaels. Mm -hmm. Seven years after the screw job, and they still haven't forgiven him. Gives the match a different energy to Mania, especially with Canadian Benoit tapping HBK's ass out with the sharpshooter of all things. A bit yep. slower, the crowd are a little less keyed up than at the garden, the entertaining HBK hate to one side, but it's still a trio of very accomplished wrestlers doing they had very a accomplished fantastic things. Rematch. Number four, Cena Loved versus it. Orton versus Edge versus Shawn Michaels 2007. An underrated, underrepresented format. You really don't see enough fatal four-way main events. Maybe it's because WWE's one-off pay-per-view fatal four-way was a load of old Jessup. What wasn't, however, was the main event of Backlash 07, a frankly ludicrous Chef Boyardee overstuffed <laughs> Italian yeah. sausage ravioli of a match featuring Cena, HBK, and rated RKO. The action yep. is non-stop. The crowd loved every moment, and there's dueling storylines running through it. Rated RKO reunite with the crowd wondering when the inevitable heel got a heel betrayal will come. And it's also the cap and the jaw-dropping Cena Michaels trilogy of matches. It's also got one of the best closing sequences in fatal four-way history with counter after counter and finishing move after Bro. People like to some people would try to paint the uh even though I, I, this is a little bit after the ruthless aggression era, this is more of the PG side of things. I think they went PG like 2007. They were still putting on some good. Oh, they were putting on some good matches. I know a lot of fans had kind of turned away because of the John Cena effect, but there were some good feuds and good matches around the 2006 to like maybe 2008 era in WWE. There was some solid. Solid, solid good matches, good entertaining segments, good storylines. Take me back to those days. I'll take that. I ain't gonna lie to you. Finishing take move, ending days. in a spot where everyone's down the pimples, a lucky accident. A bunch of moves in a can, but all of the moves are fun. Number three, The Rock versus Steve Austin, 99. Welcome to the first part of the This Is The Match They Should Have Had At WrestleMania trilogy. That happens more often than you'd mm -hmm. think, which isn't to say that the match between Rock and Austin at Mania 15 is bad. It's just hecka bland compared to this one. All in all, considering the boiler room brawl between Mankind and Big Show almost made this list, Backlash 99 was a better show than Mania 15. Not not a hard job. Mania 15 was wank with a capital wank. The main event of the show was a no holds barred rematch between Austin and The Rock, and it was a lot of fun featuring a super hot start courtesy of Austin off the back of one of the silliest wrestling bills. Seriously, had fake funerals being crashed by monster trucks <laughs> yep. wrestling, and an all time great Stone Cold Stunner to The Rock while he's holding the, the camera. production oh, cameras. There's a lot that more personality to this match than the Mania match. Hot damn, Austin The Rock had some chemistry. Number two, Randy Orton versus Cactus Jack, 2004. Ooh. Welcome to part two of the This Is the Match They Should Have Had at WrestleMania. Mania yep. trilogy, like Empire, this one gets a little dark. Foley yeah. and Orton had a blood feud going into WrestleMania 20. Foley had had his legend killed by being kicked down some stairs. In fact, he had his hardcore legend status kicked straight out of his head, leaving Raw in cowardly shame. Then he came back at the Rumble with a mission of trying to prove to himself that he was the same hardcore legend, but then turns out The Rock was free, so instead of doing a hardcore match at Mania, that got shunted to Backlash so The Rock and Sock Connection could ride once again and lose. Anywho, this hardcore match is the dog's tit. Oh, There's another man, stellar bro. example of Mick Foley forging new legends for up-and-coming talent in fire and water. Bro, this match alone was just so... Oh, my God. This was this was so fucking lit, bro. And it made Randy Orton even more of a star because he could go. He was willing to take his body that not many people were. And this made a lot of people respect Randy Orton as the next future of the business because he was willing to go through all types of pain to show he can hang, man. And that that was awesome, bro. This this whole match, just cringe-inducing awesomeness. Oh, my Why God. Why the spots escalate to a frankly horrendous degree, including one of the gnarliest oh. thumbtack spots of all time, oh. the sheer amount that stick in the lad. An annoying moment halfway through where Bishop interrupts the match to tell off Mick Foley for trying to light a baseball bat on fire, but otherwise, this is hardcore heaven. Yeah. And number one, Triple H versus The Rock. 2000 and of course part three of the this is a match they should have had at wrestlemania trilogy mm -hmm. an absolute shenanigan that they ran the mcmahon in every corner four way instead yeah. of rock versus triple h hey ho 
what are you going to do? Not exactly complaining because, hell, this is the epitome of everything I love about wrestling. Clear, comic book style story. Look at all the Stooges in their matching shirts. Maximum hubris, maximum reveal, maximum payoff. The yep. McMahon Helmsley regime stacked the deck against The Rock. It looks yep. like Austin won't show up to be in The Rock's corner. Very stupid, very wonderful double rock bottom through a table. Then Austin does show up and to one of the loudest, oh, most sustained pops, pops of all time. Yep. He cleans house, Rock wins the title. Hell, even Linda gets a huge pop mm -hmm. by pushing over Steph, just constant that was crashing waves of good too. feeling and catharsis after a very shitty WrestleMania. It's a match that I've gone back and rewatched so many times just for this one moment when the glass shatters because this moment is the oh pinnacle my God. of why I like wrestling. I also like wrestling when Shane jumps off really high things. I'm Adam and thank you for enjoying my- Bro, when that glass broke, it's just, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Just people losing their shit. Oh man. Hey. Backlash has actually had some good moments, good matches, man. Uh, and I do think that this year's Backlash, I'm hoping, will be a, a nice little follow-up to WrestleMania. I still stand by. This should have been, the focus really should have been on the unification of the tag team division. Not sure if they're going to do it at a later date. We will see. But um, I am interested to see how things pan out this year and uh backlash so comment down below let me know what was your favorite backlash um pay-per-view like what year was your favorite backlash pay-per-view let me know down below but i appreciate all love and support road to 80k we're almost there appreciate y'all keeping with me see y'all next week